Acute seizures and epilepsy are a well-recognized and prominent manifestations of autoimmune encephalitis. This recognition is of paramount importance since immunotherapy is often needed in addition to anti-seizure medication therapy. Hello, my name is Dr. Antana Faisa. I am one of the epilepsy physicians at the Mayo Clinic, Jacksonville, Florida. My colleagues and I wrote a commentary entitled Autoimmune Encephalitis Related Seizures and Epilepsy, Diagnostic and Therapeutic Approach. This article will appear in the August 2021 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. The International League Against Epilepsy have recently proposed conceptual definitions for two main diagnostic entities of immune-mediated seizures. They propose the term acute symptomatic seizures secondary to autoimmune encephalitis when seizures occur during the active phase of autoimmune encephalitis. In contrast, autoimmune-associated epilepsy refers to chronic seizures determined to be secondary to autoimmune brain diseases. Currently, the exact prevalence of autoimmune-associated epilepsy is not known. However, it is estimated that 5-7% to of all epilepsies in adults have an autoimmune etiology. These patients present with acute or subacute seizures, often frequent from the onset. A history of preceding viral prodrome is common. Additional neurological symptoms, including autonomic disturbances, neurobehavioral problems, memory decline, and movement disorders are also common. Some may present with new onset refractory status, epilepticus. A key to the diagnosis is obtaining serum and cerebrospinal fluid neuronal antibody panel. A majority of these antibodies target neuronal surface antigens, such as NMDA or LG1 antibody. Another group of antibodies target neuronal intracellular antigens, such as GAD65 and MA2 antibodies. EEG, brain MRI, and PET scan are usually required. Tumor screening is generally warranted, especially when antibodies that are known to be associated with specific tumors are present. Predicting scores such as antibody prevalence in epilepsy and encephalopathy score can help in case selection for antibody testing. These scores factor in the clinical presentation, CSF and MRI findings, as well as cancer history. Although evidence is still limited, the current recommended first-line treatment for acute symptomatic seizures secondary to autoimmune encephalitis is immunotherapy with either intravenous or oral steroid, IV immunoglobulin, or plasma exchange. Typically, patients with antibodies against cell surface antigens are more likely to respond to immunotherapy, especially when diagnosed early. In contrast, those with neuronal antibodies against intracellular antigens will require long-term anti-seizure medication therapy as shown in this figure. The Center for Multiple Sclerosis and Autoimmune Neurology at the Mayo Clinic is recognized as a leader in immune-mediated neurological disorders, including epilepsy. Recent progress in the field includes discovering novel antibodies and developing treatment approach for immune-mediated seizures. Besides, the Neuroimmunology Laboratory at the Mayo Clinic can test a diverse array of neuronal antibodies on blood and CSF samples from patients presenting with immune-mediated neurological disorders. When acute symptomatic seizures secondary to autoimmune encephalitis or autoimmune-associated epilepsy is suspected on clinical presentation, urgent consultation with neurology is recommended since early treatment with immunotherapy can drastically alter the disease course. With the increasing awareness, there can be mounting pressure on physicians to diagnose and treat this condition quickly. However, it is critical to keep a broad differential in every case, particularly antibody-negative patients. Alternative diagnoses, including genetic and metabolic etiologies, should also be considered. Besides, the detection of non-specific systemic autoantibodies, including ANA and TPO, do not often implicate immune-mediated seizures. 
As we continue to advance our knowledge in immune-mediated seizures and epilepsy, we need to clarify its definition and diagnostic criteria and promote recognition of relevant symptoms that would lead to early neurology referral and timely diagnosis. The studies are needed to identify additional CSF and imaging biomarkers to help guide therapy and long-term monitoring. The role of long-term immunotherapy, including monoclonal antibodies, also needs to be clarified in future prospective multi-centered trials. Lastly, at the molecular level, elucidating the exact pathophysiologic mechanism and genetic risk factors will help develop more specific and effective therapies for this condition. Thank you very much for your attention, and I invite you to read the full article in the August issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.